What's up, everybody? Daniel Jeremiah here as we look at the top eight rookies heading into week three of the NFL season. And let's start right down here in the corner, number eight on the list, uh, LaVisca Chenault, the uh, talented wide receiver for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who's also spent some time in the backfield. And, you know, this is somebody, if you, if you go into his final year at Colorado, wasn't fully healthy, but when you watched him as a younger player, you saw just a real dynamic, physical, competitive, tough uh, football player. I remember against Stanford uh, last year, they had a short yardage play. They give him the ball and uh, on a fly sweep, and there's an unblocked defensive lineman. He just runs him over to get the first down. Well, you watch that game on Sunday. You saw him do the same thing uh, to remember the secondary of the Tennessee Titans. Just very physical as a runner. Just get the ball in his hands and let him go. Uh, number seven right beneath me here, that's Antoine Winfield Jr., the uh, fine safety and playing some nickel as well for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They move him all over the place. Had double-digit tackles this last week. They blitzed him, had a sack, a forced fumble. Just, uh, you know, just incredibly, incredibly instinctive. And you're seeing that against the run, and you're going to see more of that against the pass as he continues to just gain more experience. But uh, somebody who stepped right in and played really well for the Bucks. All right, let's go to uh, number six down here in this corner. That is Jonathan Taylor, uh, the running back for the Indianapolis Colts. We saw in week one what he could do in the passing game, which was a pleasant surprise. You have the injury to Marlon Mack, and last week they gave him a heavy workload. And the yards per carry is not going to blow you away, but just real physical, tough, uh, pounding runner with that big-time home run speed. So you know if the carries keep coming in bunches like they did in this game, you're going to see him really pop some long runs going forward. I know the Colts are excited about Jonathan Taylor. All right, let's get over to number five right here. We've got a couple quarterbacks coming up here. Joe Burrow. Uh, what he did against the Cleveland Browns on Thursday night football, I thought it was outstanding the way he played in that game. Uh, threw the ball a zillion times. I don't love that. But you're seeing him get very comfortable, get the ball out of your hands. You get pressure. He's found ways to deal with that, using his athleticism to escape and make some plays there. We've got to dial it way back in terms of the number of pass attempts, if they can get some balance there with Joe Mixon, I think you'll see an even better version of Joe Burrow going forward. But he comes in at number five on the list. Number four, another quarterback, uh, Justin Herbert, was there on the call for the Chargers radio broadcast in this game. And Herbert didn't find out he was going to play till right before the game started. All he does is go out there against the defending champs and lead the Chargers right down the field, and they get into the end zone. There's, uh, there's still, obviously, plenty of growth uh, ahead here for Herbert. There's a play, one play, where in the middle of the play, you see him consult his, uh, his wristband there to check the play call as he had a, a receiver in motion, so getting some last-minute uh, cramming done there. And it opened up the wrong way a couple times in some, some play action. But you saw his arm strength on display, the touchdown throw, big-time throws outside the numbers. You saw him work the middle of the field with Keenan Allen, a layer to football, showed tremendous touch. Uh, there we saw him on speed option with his legs we saw him beat the free rusher with his athleticism you saw him knock out a linebacker when he took off on a run on the sideline that's just how big and strong he is so there's a lot to like about uh, about what he did in his first start we'll see what he does in his next start against the Carolina Panthers but Herbert is number four let's go top corner here number three uh, Chase Young and I could make a case for Chase Young to be the number one guy on the list each and every week um, but when you when you look at the guys ahead of him, it'll make sense. But again, he was very disruptive in that game against the Arizona Cardinals. Very physical. Um, he can rush the passer with power and speed. You've seen it all thus far through two weeks. Uh, number two on the list right above me is CeeDee Lamb. Big game for him and a comeback win against the Atlanta Falcons. They found ways to get him isolated on linebackers and safeties, and he made them pay in a big way in week two. So, so far, a consistent start. For C.D. Lamb, he's been outstanding, the best receiver in this draft, and I think that's uh, that's shown forth here through a couple weeks. Uh, number one on the list, top shelf here, that's Mekhi Becton, big tackle for the Jets. The Jets are uh, they're not good. They're not a good football team right now, but you can be encouraged about the fact they've got their anchor at left tackle. He held up very well against Nick Bosa in that game before Bosa got hurt. He's collecting knockdowns in the run game. He just continues to get better and better in pass protection. You cannot get through him. Uh, so Mekhi Becton comes in at number one on this week's list. Uh, that's going to do it for me. appreciate you guys uh, hanging with me here and subscribing to the channel. Leave me some comments down below and let me know who should be on the list that wasn't. See you next time.